This is Teoma Masal and it is Tuesday morning. It's overcast, but lots of blue sky as well, so really weird sort of feeling about it. Like part of the sky is, a good part of the sky is overcast, but where it isn't, it's beautiful blue sky. So it's 14 degrees here in southern British Columbia and that would make it 57. Uh, translated into American. Um, it is... The, I, I just, you can feel the temperature is changing. It's slowly, but you can feel it changing. Um, it doesn't look quite as inviting as it did before, but it's still gorgeous. And I'll take this sort of weather any day. Um, We've got many months of rain coming. <laughs> One of the things you learn about living in the Pacific Northwest area is uh, you're going to get lots of rain. And I personally prefer it to snow because uh, I don't have to shovel rain. It manages to get rid of itself very nicely, thank you. Um, <laughs> but I know that uh, a lot of you prefer snow. Probably people who don't have to shovel it, now that I think about it. Um, I've always thought snow was very pretty until I uh, was a homeowner, a single homeowner. <laughs> um, the word for today. I, I want to say that it is constricted. Now why constricted? Well, for today, for the first day, I decided not to wear my sandals to work and put my boots on, my, my short boots. And that's how my feet feel right now. They're, they're not used to being constricted like that. They've had, you know, a few summer months of being out in the open and suddenly I have contained them and constricted them and they are not altogether happy. Now, it's not that the boots are too small. The boots are absolutely the right size and have been for some time. The problem is that my feet, in being in sandals all summer, you know, have expanded in different areas. <laughs> and now it's time for them. It's like wearing a corset, you know, it's suddenly they're being forced to um, readjust. And I was thinking about the fact that we all get forced to readjust every now and then. Um, and it may not be what we want to do, but it is what is necessary to do. I was thinking you know, my friend Yvonne is away, um, she was visiting her father and her father got sick while she was away and more so than he already was and she had to make a decision whether to come back to work or to stay the extra day just to help him and she made the decision to stay the extra day, that means she had to readjust a lot of things I'm sure, uh, both at work and uh, in other areas because that's what happens you, you you need to sort of change your pattern so I always think that going from seasons you know summer to fall or whatever shift of seasons we have also creates a readjustment I'd love to tell you that I got home last night and did two pages of my book and I would be lying because I didn't 
Uh, I got home. I did do a lot of things. Actually, I went shopping on the way home. Um, <laughs> it was time I was running out of toilet paper. Um, <laughs> you know, that's not something you want to run out of. And so, um, it's. I went shopping and didn't buy any makeup or anything to do videos on. I just went and did the basics of what I needed. Um, and then got home. And you know, by the time I got the video up, uh, I was exhausted. And it was only like quarter after nine. And I decided, okay, fine, you need to stop and just rest. And I fell asleep and didn't wake up again until one. <laughs> um, you know, it was just like, wow. My body is trying to readjust from having been on vacation and it doesn't quite know what to do. It's used to staying up late, <clears throat> but it's also not used to the stress that I had had at work yesterday. And you can imagine your first day back after a week and it was pretty overwhelming <laughs> in, in lots of ways, but I was very calm about it all. It was just that I had to put everything in logical order in my mind and okay, fine, you know, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but you know I'm not a neat freak, but if when I'm at work, if I don't have my work areas, and I have a couple of them, um, if I don't have them cleared, I can't think. You know, if I'm overrun by stuff, I can't think. So I actually have to, every morning, see what has landed on my desk and on my work areas, to, because people put different things in different places. Um, and just sort of assess, if you like, do a triage, how important is this? Um, and then just document it enough to put it away. Uh-oh, I just saw some very interesting body language. I just saw a bus. Well, I didn't see the bus until later. What I saw was a guy in a car raising his hands up going, what the is going on? Uh, which made me wonder, why was he doing that? He was just coming out of a road. Why would he be reacting like that? And then I saw the bus ahead of him. Obviously, he's got somebody in the car with him that needs the bus, which means he's going to be doing an extra trip. <laughs> that he wasn't expecting. Or the poor person's got to wait for the next bus, whichever. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have anybody in his car with him. Weird. Either he's a very angry man at this time of the morning. Hmm, I think I'll stay well away from him. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm a great believer that you are the way you drive your car. I was listening this morning. Um, to the news report about the <clears throat> um, NFL who punched out his wife in an elevator and then literally dragged her body out and sort of dumped it. When you see that sort of violence, you wonder what on earth is going on in the world. Um, 
And, and you know, perhaps more difficult to take was the fact that the wife, well, she was a girlfriend at the time, but she subsequently married him and become his wife. And you're going, lady, if he's got the sort of temper where he can literally turn your lights out with a punch because you upset him, you marry this guy? And I wonder all the excuses that one comes up with. Oh, but I really love him. Well, you know, if you love somebody who punches the heck out of your face, even if it is one single punch, uh, you've got a serious problem. That is not love. This person does not love you. Sorry, I was just watching. The guy ahead of me is in the fast lane and, and won't move over. And then he slowed down and I was trying to work out what the heck was going on now. And then I saw a cop car and I went, okay, makes sense. <clears throat> so I was thinking about the... Um, The number of women in the world that still believe that that is love, and, and that's frightening. That is so frightening to me. I saw a lovely quote uh, from the Oprah Network yesterday, which was, I can't remember it exactly, but it had something along the lines of um, oh, that cop car just pulled a car over uh, something along the lines of every woman's heart deserves to be loved in a way that makes her forget that it was ever broken I thought that was so beautiful I, I don't think I quoted it exactly correctly, but near enough. Um, so you get the idea. What a beautiful feeling. Nothing constrained or contained about that. <laughs> there was just beautiful openness. So you look at life and you go, every day we get challenged. Every day we get to fit into a box or not our choice. Um, I think about my shoes and think, you know, I choose to put them on. Because they're warmer. And the temperature, we know that the temperature is shifting enough that I'm thinking about bare feet is not quite such a good idea anymore. So it's the price one pays, right, for warmer shoes is that you're going to have your feet contained. So I look at that and I go, okay, life is like that. Life is like that a lot. Um, but they, my feet are not being punished. Right? It's not that they hurt. It's not that they're sore or being punished in any way. They're just being asked to readjust to the new shape of shoes <laughs> and that they will live in for the next six to eight months. <laughs> so get used to it pretty quickly. Please. So, you know, I, I think about that and I think, well, gosh, you know, every day things happen in our lives where we have to shift. We, we have to readjust our thinking. We have to adapt. And it's not easy, is it?
I think about um, Leslie in Scotland and the major vote that they're going to be having um, in a couple of days where Scotland will decide to stay within the British Isles or not. Uh, part of Britain. I mean, you go, wow, that is huge. And, you know, we, we in Canada understand what's at stake here because we've had a number of times when Quebec has wanted to do the same thing. They wanted to create their own country. And each time, the vote has gone against it. But it's, it's very scary for both parties. It's very scary for, for those that want to see that sort of change. And then it's very scary for those who want to keep the status quo. And I know that when we were talking to Leslie, she was saying, you know, well, the, at the moment, the no votes were, were definitely in control. And yet I'm seeing in the news now that they're saying that the yes vote is beginning to catch up now. So it'll be interesting. They've only got a couple of days to go. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how the vote goes. Whatever happens, it will be a major shift. Whatever happens, you understand, um, the whole country will be divided in some way, uh, as they probably already are, in terms of you know, which way you're voting. And you get to be intelligent or unintelligent, depending on which way you vote. Have you noticed that? <laughs> when people get into these discussions, how stupid can you be to vote like that? Um, <laughs> you know, it's just insane. But you know, the thing is that at least they get to have healthy discussions. And maybe just by the discussions alone, things will change for the better. And that's what I've always... Oh. I've got one of those... Um, trucks ahead of me. It's got a dirty great water tank on the back. Can't help thinking how many gallons that is. That's a lot of gallons in that tank. Anyway, but the interesting thing is for some reason they didn't put the top on the container. And every time this guy does a quick stop, water comes splurging off the top of it. And, of course, onto a, um, compressor. And you're going, I wonder how well that compressor's going to work when they try to use it. Not very well, I would think. Well. Ah, life. He'll need some readjustment of his thinking as well. <laughs> so have a look at your life today and, and watch what's going on and see how many things are subtle shifts, just little things that you need to readjust to. And um, is it really as, as huge as you think it is? I know as I was, when I was younger, everything seemed like such a huge constraint or a huge confinement or, you know, all those sort of things, where in fact it was just small stuff. And I think part of getting mature is that you don't sweat small stuff as much. Uh, you notice it, you know it's there, you understand it's still doing what it's doing but it's not life-threatening to you. And if they I think that's one of the main sort of benchmarks of maturity. Can you handle the everyday stress in a dignified way? Or is every little hiccup you know, send you into an emotional tailspin?
And I'm not quite sure what I can tell you the answer is to that, except that, you know, <clears throat> when it happens to you, I, I would recommend you say something that I say to myself, which is, I always ask myself, five years from now, will this still be important? Um, or even five months from now, will it be important? And you know, that sort of puts it into perspective. Now, for example, when my sewer starts backing up one time, you go, five months from now, is this going to be important? Well, no, it'll be a nasty memory, but it won't be that important. When the sewer backs up twice in a few months, you're going, this is very important. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five months from now, I could flood my basin. So, uh, yeah, that gets to be very important. And so that's a nice, easy way to um, readjust and check how, how things are going and whether it's worth spending a lot of time on or not. So have a good day. Do what you can to be a good person.